Leaders with Vision is a political, nonpartisan, no borders organization serving all of the citizens of Louisiana. What are we doing here today? Today we're doing the first and the premier legislative review of the legislative session. It was kind of a messy affair. There was not a lot of leadership from the governor after he parked his tax, tax plan on the first day of the session. Uh, so it, it kind of left the legislature, anybody set out his parameters, they didn't want any tax increases, wouldn't accept the expansion of Medicaid. And uh, so that left the legislature kind of to figure out how to get things done. And they, of course, went to fighting within themselves, but uh, ended up in the end, I think, with a responsible budget, more than in past years, less reliance on funny money and uh, contingent uh, funding. Uh, so uh, we'll, you know, we'll, they did miss an opportunity, I think, to really deal with tax reform, which was supposed to be the idea of this session, to really work at the tax code to make it fair and simpler, whether or not we repealed the income taxes, a lot of things we could have done that uh, they didn't, because I think it just, uh, they said they had tax fatigue, although the, they hardly debated any tax bills. Your analysis of what happened with higher education in this session? Uh, well, it's not a lot happened in the way of the, the, the basic structural problems with funding. It, it did get some money in the end out of the budget for much needed maintenance on college campuses, but uh, you know we, we didn't really address any of the um, reorganizing how higher education is, is, is funded. The community colleges did real well. They got through a bill, uh, kind of kind of did a sidestep around the, uh, the regular process for funding construction on college campuses. The uh, community colleges got authorization to borrow a quarter of a billion dollars to build uh, technology centers uh, around the state. The legislators really liked that idea because they felt there was something to do about uh, helping out with uh, uh, postgraduate education of the, of the people who were um, uh, well, post-secondary education for people who, who aren't going on to college. So uh, we'll be seeing more. Uh, I think it was a real boost for community colleges. It probably came at the expense of the four-year colleges in, in terms of resources. There was probably more bicameral and bipartisan uh, cooperation than we've seen in a long time. A really good, fresh, independent streak on the part of the House of Representatives. And they did reach a budget that was uh, about the same uh, for next year as it is the current year. But uh, the concern that we have and that everyone ought to have is they built in a lot of long-term costs, long-term obligations and constraints uh, that are going to cause us some problems down the road. Uh, we're we're going to have more likely uh, to have more budget uh, shortfalls in the future, uh, a lot of uh, pressure uh, for higher taxes, and you, you, you had a lot of uh, difficulty for higher education. So uh, overall, a good effort, a good process, but we have a lot of things that are either being neglected or piled up uh, for future expenses that are uh, going to cause us problems down the road. I think that what, we've, what Louisiana voters found out that it, it, this year is that there are actually three branches of government in Louisiana. Uh, people may have forgotten that, you know, in recent years, especially with how powerful the governor was. But when you consider that what we thought was going to be the signature issue, that's his tax reform proposal, died the first day. And the legislature balked at his, uh, at his call for them to rewrite the plan, and instead, instead they rewrote his budget. Uh, that suggests that the government didn't have as, as much political power as maybe he did a year ago. Now, the governor is not irrelevant because uh, uh, he still was able to, to push through uh, uh, his plans to, to privatize more state hospitals, um, and they successfully beat back efforts to privatize, uh, I'm sorry, to, to, to uh, uh, expand Medicaid, uh, which was a priority of many Democrats. Uh, and it also defeated, a, a, defeated an idea that would have uh, uh, reduced the tax exemptions for many of the corporations. So, he's, so the governor is still the governor in many ways in Louisiana. But uh, with the Supreme Court of Louisiana, in Louisiana saying that the voucher plan is unconstitutional, again, the Supreme Court made, made, made an appearance. So I think in summary, uh, we were reminded that in Louisiana, like the rest of the country, there really are three branches of government. 
We had a successful session. We uh, always go in kind of with trepidation, but um, I think uh, as sessions go in my seven years as insurance commissioner, this was probably been, this one's been our most successful. Um, first and foremost, we did no harm in the process. Uh, there were challenges, in particular relative to the ongoing affordability issue with regard to property insurance, always a challenge. Although our market has stabilized, prices are still uh, too high. And we are working on that in uh, various ways that we hope through competition from the private sector uh, will bring those costs down. On the health insurance side, challenged as we are with the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, uh, we were nonetheless able to get two big consumer protection measures through during this session that we've been unable in years past uh, to get a majority support for. One is network adequacy for health insurers, something that's really basic but was absent from our law. Hadn't been a particular problem, but now we have the tool in our toolbox to force companies to have adequate OB services, emergency room services, um, surgical services, you name it. If they're going to sell health insurance, they need to have an adequate network of providers in place. The other is the appeal process. Now that got swept up in the Obamacare, if you will, because part of that Affordable Care Act says if states don't have an adequate appeal, internal appeal process for denial of coverage when a consumer needs coverage, then the feds will supplant, will displace or preempt uh, the states from that jurisdiction. We didn't want to see that happen to force our folks to go to Washington to get their, their coverage when needed. And we were able in this session, having failed in the past, to get the legislature to look past the label of, a, of Obamacare and look at the fact that this is really about protecting their constituents, our constituents, uh, when they're in need in a health insurance uh, denial of coverage situation. There was another bill that affected the uh, regulation of the navigators that are going to be involved with the uh, October 1st once Obamacare actually becomes uh, into effect. Absolutely. And all we were doing is monitoring those navigators. Federal government says we can't require them to uh, meet the same standards that a licensed agent must meet. And so to the extent that the federal law allows us to make them register so that we know who they are and know where they are, uh, we were able to pass that legislation as well. It required a compromise with the consumer groups that thought perhaps we were overreaching into an effort to try to do something about the Affordable Care Act or, or suppress its implementation. Not what we were about. We just wanted to be able to monitor these folks who are going to be directing consumers, uh, counseling them on what to buy and what not to buy, similar though not the same as an agent. It's a new entity, a new profession, if you will, a new vehicle created by the Affordable Care Act, and we wanted the ability to monitor their activity. Uh, on another front uh, with a, a tropical storm occurring within the first uh, six and seven days of the, year, of the uh, uh, year of the season for hurricanes, what's your advice to people now? Be prepared. Uh, my statewide storm tour that I do at the beginning of hurricane season every year is underway. Uh, I have been to uh, Bat Baton Rouge Media, Lafayette, Lake Charles, New Orleans. We'll be swinging through North Louisiana later this month. It is obviously off to a ominous start with Andrea already bearing down on the panhandle of Florida. But the projections are for an above average hurricane season with up to 20 named storms, about half of those becoming hurricanes and about half of those or five becoming major hurricanes. So that policyholders need to do a checkup on what their coverage is, what it's not. They need to access the still 
federally subsidized national flood insurance program and be prepared to heed evacuation warnings. First and foremost, protect themselves and their families by getting them out of, way, out of harm's way and then knowing what coverage they have to protect their property in the event of a hurricane visiting their area. If people have questions like more information, what should they do? Please contact us, 1-800-259-5300, or go to our website, www.ldi.la.gov, 1-800-259-5300. The purpose is to encourage people to become informed and, be, and engage in the political process, because every day, government is touching your life, and it's time you take control of government. And that's what we're here for, to be an educational source. We are also uh, facilitate uh, meetings on issues so from all points of view uh, so that you can learn and make up your own mind. What you decide is up to you. If people have questions like more information, what should they do? They can either call me at 225-927-2255 or visit our website at www.lwvision.org.